Welcome everyone, this is Marina from Fox and Felix and I'm going to show you how to sew a classic vest. Here you can see it with a beautiful v-neck and shaggy fur and your preteens will actually really really like this. This pattern goes up to age 12 and starts at six months and the example for that is here. It's fully reversible and the clue is this beautiful little cam snap on top of a tab at the top that's how we fasten it super easy very quickly made and it will keep your toddler warm and of course your teen as well now this here is made with a shaggy fur and for that i've lined it again with some brushed cotton and at the end of the video i'm going to show you a few tricks for that and here you can see the beautiful clasp I've got, which is actually from Target Trim in Los Angeles. And the good news is they are online and I have got a link to this clasp in the video description. I'm so glad they finally got online. It's one of my favorite shops here in Los Angeles. One thing to remember when you're doing shaggy fur on anything, you want to sellotape up the fur when you are cutting out. I didn't and hence it looks a little bit like a bad haircut when you look closely. You can also just use a hook and eye to close it of course. Let's get started with the little top. I've got a fleece here and a brushed cotton and I think if you are a beginner sewer that is the ideal combination of course. First of all you want to print off your pattern. Make very sure you print it with Adobe Acrobat DC. You can download that for free in the instruction booklet. It will have the link to that as well. And then the last page usually has got an assembly plan so you can see how many pieces you need to put it together. Make sure that your measurement is correct. So you've got either an inch or five centimeters. And then looking at the pattern, you can see that you have a slender and regular as well. I think that's really important. When you're cutting out, you want to make sure that you only fold over as much as you need to get out your pattern. And if you haven't got a directional fabric, you can put them on like this and you will use very, very little. In fact, you probably get two out. So we need the back on the fold and then we need the front twice in the lining and the shell fabric. The first step for this is to put together the shoulder seams of the outer fabric, which is the shell, and the lining. Make sure that the right side is on the inside and the wrong side on the outside. And then we're going to close those shoulder seams. On the lining, it's much, much easier to see. Here, you just flip it over. And we're going to pin that as well and then we're taking it to the sewing machine and we're putting it together and the seam allowance on my patterns is always one centimeter and when you're sewing this try to get into the habit of pushing the next part straight under it it saves you a lot of thread in the long run and if you're using very expensive thread such as Gutermann or something like that or similar then you really don't want to waste it. It goes very fast, as you know, those reels just go poof. <laughs> so push them in. And all along you can see the beautiful examples that we've made here for this vest to inspire you as to what you could be making. Then you want to iron the seam apart, really press it down, make sure it's nice and flat. You could also top stitch it either side if you like. Then you take the tab, fold it over. You can either use your sewn tab or you use a little ribbon like I've done here and you put that onto the right side of your vest a little bit further than a one centimeter over and in because that's the seam allowance. And I'm also going to fold it back a bit so I don't accidentally catch it when I come along there and I sew it all together. Now you want to put the lining over the top. You make sure that the shoulder seams are on top of each other. So I'm going to use some pins to fixate that. There we go. That will also, of course, keep the seam allowances from folding over. And in the front, we're starting halfway down the front. Okay. 
and then we'll sew all the way around. You want to pin that really well. So go all around here and finish halfway down the front and then we're going to close both arm holes all the way around. I haven't used any stay tape for this so the trick here is to push your fabric and never ever pull it, push it towards the presser foot and that way you don't need the stay tape. If you are a beginner that's very likely to pull your fabric and you have then with these horrendous arm walls and neck um, stretched necklines then please do use stay tape or use a stay stitch before you put it together but if you are um, fairly confident you can do this then just push it in like you can see me do here and effectively what you're doing is actually you're putting in the stay stitch while you're stitching it. So that's a really neat trick. Um, I always like to work very fast and if I don't need stay tape, then I will not use it. Next, we're doing the front here. We're going halfway up from the front. Put your needle down as you get to the corner. That's really important. Lift the presser foot and turn. Go all the way around. Do the same on the other side. Come back down. Now we need to make sure that there's no tension on all these seams because they're coming in on itself, don't they? So what you want to do is you want to snip it. You could also cut the seam allowance back um, I haven't done that here. It's not necessary. It's not that thick. If you have very thick fabric, you might want to cut it back in stages. So you've got one seam allowance slightly shorter than the other. Make sure you cut the seam allowance back here as well so it's nice and flat. That's usually enough to get something like this right. When it comes to the corner, here some people say oh yeah just fold it over and turn it but this would make it very thick and because we're going to have a cum snap there you need to cut this back really you know sharpish uh, almost right to your seam because otherwise it will interfere with your cum snap and i'm sure that some of you have already had this experience where the cum snap won't go in because it's just simply too thick or too many uh, layers or not the same height of layer there you can see the cam snap, so make sure that you do cut that back very well. And then we're pulling the front through the back. And I'm just going in with my fingers here and I grab the part of the front that's furthest away. Push that through with my fingers. You could use a safety pin as well, of course. I just use my fingers. And then I pull it. For the smaller sizes, this is quite hard because obviously the shoulder isn't very wide, so you need to give that a really good tack, but it will come through as you can see here. And then we can give this all a good press. I didn't do any under stitching on this one simply because I'm using a heavier fabric and a lighter fabric. And the heavier fabric for the outside will automatically like push a little bit over. So there's no need to do this. Plus I'm going to top stitch all this. So I didn't do it. You could of course under stitch the armhole as far up as you can go. If you're using say two quilt and cottons, then it will look even better. The next step is to close your side seam. So put it in front of you, then the front goes up, and the back goes up, and we're closing this from one side to the other. Again, the seam is pinned down so that it can't fold over, and there we go. It's so simple, you're going to really love making these. Um, the second one shouldn't take you much longer than about 30 to 40 minutes. And then we're leaving on one of the lining sides, I'm leaving a turning gap. Now if you're top stitching it like me all the way around, you don't really need to do that. You can leave the turning gap in the hem. If you're not top stitching it and you want it to look like very, very classy and not so sporty, then you need to leave it like I've just done here. I am the seams apart. And then you also want to make sure that there's no tension. We're going to snip one of the seams and we're going to reduce the seam allowance here so it's not in the way. 
snip it right to the seam close to the stitching line there and then we've got some space where the seam can go I had forgotten to iron the other side so <gasps> need to iron that too and then we're going to iron it closed so to do that you want to put your thumb in there so none of the seam allowances can fold over and then you hold it and take it to the ironing board and quickly press that and then it will go absolutely nowhere gosh this is fast right so brilliant there we go now all we have to do is close the hem in order to do that just start at the front you need to poke it out a little bit again so that you can get in there better you can see me doing that here so just put your hand in there and then start where you stopped and basically sew all the way around so if you think this is confusing just start on the one end lining and shell together and start pinning from there then the next step would be to put the side seam on top of each other and the vest will disappear to the inside. It's actually really simple. See, it just lies on the inside. Start on the other side as well. And pin it all together. Again, I've pinned it with these pins vertical to the seam so that um, nothing can fold over and it looks a little bit like a big sausage now and then as I go along sewing it it'll just open up there I'm just gonna do that now again when you do all this don't push your fabric push it towards the presser foot always and then do a really nice curve there and if you're wondering who the beautiful model is you can see blended in here that is of course the lovely Magdalena who's always modeling all my stuff and for the first time her sister Victoria is on there as well that is the little baby she's um, 11 months old and uh, she's absolutely lovely so so I have got both of those girls now modeling which is fantastic Cut back your seam allowances. Excellent stuff. And we're cutting that back pretty sharpish as well, especially where we have the curve. Because again, we don't want too much fabric sitting in there as we turn it over. And then I'm just going through that turning gap I left. And I go to the part that is furthest away from that vest and I grab it and then I pull it through wonderful that's really simple I love this technique there are different techniques for waistcoat construction and when I do the boys waistcoat which is next project after this I will show you how that works as well slightly different to this but um, there are many ways to roam as I say and this is just the one of them so give it all a very good press, roll the fabric with your fingers so that the edge really comes out. And then we can close the little gap we've had. You could also do that with a sewing machine, but because I want this to be reversible, I do it by hand and I do it so you can't even see it. And in true form, I'd actually turned off my camera instead of on <laughs> and turned it on when I was at the end so basically slip stitch it together and now we're going to top stitch the whole lot when you're doing top stitching it's really important to extend your stitch length especially if you've got a fairly basic machine which seems to be like hammering in the same spot all the time make it quite long like 3.5 or even 4 so that it's long enough and that it doesn't look homemade and then the distance from the edge of the vest to where you're stitching should also be a little bit wider. Uh, I'm doing like sort of a quarter of the foot width, but you could do a total foot width as well. I think that looks really nice and something like that, that's totally appropriate. Then you're coming around the curve and sort of couple of stitches, needle down, lift the presser foot and work your way around. Don't try to do it in one go because it will not look as good. Take your time coming around there and then you will have something where people say, what, that's really nice, where did you get that? Now here I can just 
pull on my little tab as I go along, but do not pull the fabric. Push the fabric in to the presser foot because again, once that is down, this neckline will not stretch, you know, unless you um, rip your stitching. So, and you're unlikely to do that, right? So push it in, push it in, and it's very quick then, and it will not stretch. It's beautiful. And again, we turn and we go down, and that is it. Next, we're going to do the armholes. And for the armholes, you just need to uh, watch out that your fabric is always on the left side if you are right-handed, because that's where your eye is best doing it. If you do it the other way around, it's much, much harder to keep it steady and to keep it like an even distance to the edge. And you go all the way around both armholes and then and then we're going in and we're going to iron that as well. Look at that, it's beautiful. Anyway, cam snaps first. Um, you want to use your owl and that goes all the way through here. That's the, the trick always. And um, then we're lifting off what we're doing and putting our cam snaps in and that way they will be in the correct position, right? So don't be tempted to put one in and then try to put the other one in too much. So first of all, we're going to put one through from this side. I'm actually using two colors, so it's a contrast, which I think is also really nice. And I put the round edged part of my cam snap on, take my tool here, press it together and finish Bob's your uncle. I love it. I mean, I'm really, I have a serious uh, love affair with those cam snaps. And then I take the other one. You can see how close it is here to the edge. So if you hadn't cut that back, there's no way your cam snap is really going to hold with all those layers. All I have to do is do it up. It's a Maya my work. Absolutely beautiful, reversible. If you wanted to, you could put the cam snap uh, just on the inside of the lining as well. Here on the other side, it looks fine. On the other side, it is a little bit like it's lopsided because of course it's left from the center. So you could do that. So you just put it on the underside. You need to do that before you do the hem. Anyway, a um, little word about the vest if you make it with a V-neck and some furry fabric. If you want to make pom-poms, a pom-pom maker is certainly better than what I'm doing here. But if you want to do a braid like I did for it, then you need three pieces of wool hanging out there so that you can actually then uh, braid them together. Make sure you put some sellotape over the end so it can't come undone. That's really important. Um, uh, I, I learned this the hard way because mine became undone and I thought, uh oh, I'll have to do it again. So wrap some sellotape around it and then you can work it just the very same way as before. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. This lovely vest is available from frogsandfrolics.com, of course. And if you're wondering what is the beautiful Magdalena wearing underneath that vest, it's, of course, the Virginia tunic, which you can also get from frogsandfrolics.com, your best in digital sewing patterns. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.